This is Daily Armenia, Civilnet's Daily News Digest. Here's what you need to know today. Armenia has formally accused Azerbaijan before the United Nations top court of promoting hatred of Armenians at the official level. Speaking today before the International Court of Justice in The Hague, Yagishak Irakosyan, Armenia's representative on international legal matters, said that policy reached a climax in Azerbaijan's military takeover of Nagorno-Karabakh last year, which forced nearly all of the region's more than 100,000 Armenians to flee. Azerbaijan has not done anything to ensure that those who wish to return to their homeland safely after these events are able to do so, Kirakosyan added. Public hearings in Armenia's case against Azerbaijan at the ICJ alleging violations of a racial discrimination treaty began earlier this week, marking the first time a suit involving either country has been brought. The ICJ, sometimes called the World Court, is the UN's main judicial body and settles disputes between countries. Since its creation after World War II, the court has heard less than 200 cases. Though the ICJ's rulings are legally binding, the court has no enforcement powers. CivilNet will be on the ground in The Hague later this week to cover the proceedings. Please follow us for updates as we receive them. A close political ally of Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan has called for Armenia to verify that 1.5 million is the true number of Armenians killed during the genocide in remarks that immediately prompted widespread criticism. April 24th is approaching, lawmaker Andrani Kocharyan told reporters yesterday, referring to Armenian Genocide Remembrance Day. Was it 1.5 million, 2 million, or less? That should be strictly addressed. If we do not address this, the other side can always say no such thing happened, as they have been saying up until today, continued Kocharyan, who heads Parliament's Defense Committee. This is very important for establishing our relations in the future, he added, without elaborating. Kocharyan's remarks were widely condemned by Armenia's opposition, which accused Pashinyan's administration of following orders from Azerbaijan and Turkey, which deny the genocide. In clarifying comments today to Radio Azatutun, RFERL's Armenian service, Kocharyan said he was merely expressing his personal opinion, not announcing government policy. Earlier this year, Azerbaijan demanded Armenia overhaul its constitution as a precondition for stalled normalization talks to restart. The current constitution cites Armenia's declaration of independence from the Soviet Union, which, in turn, calls for international recognition of the Armenian genocide. Pashinyan has expressed openness to the idea of rewriting the country's constitution, though he has not provided any clarity on what exactly he would seek to change. You can also check out Civilnet's latest interview with Rasmus Kanback, an investigative journalist with the Swedish news site Blank Spot, who joined us this week to talk about his work and discuss how Azerbaijan has so far managed to avoid international sanctions despite outcry over its forcible takeover of Nagorno-Karabakh last year. The full conversation is up now on our website and YouTube channel. And finally, the civil net number of the day is 27. That's the percentage of Armenia's yearly energy needs that the country meets through domestic production alone, according to the latest figures from Armenia's statistical agency. The remainder is made up mainly of natural gas imports from Russia. And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.